Thank, Thank you. you very much. And uh, this slot will be um, will be made by two people, Marike and myself. I will start to share the screen with the, only the title. We don't have a, a PowerPoint, but only the titles of the sections we are developing after that. It's this window. Is it okay? You see the screen? Yes. Ah, thank you. Okay. Okay, so let's start. What is uh, our major challenge in the medium term, the challenge of the Royal Corps? It's the Muslim circumcision. Uh, if you consider four segments of circumcision, you have the medical one, the Muslim one, the ancestral circumcision, and the Jewish circumcision. The Muslim one is uh, the major challenge in the medium term because it's numerically the majority and even ge geographically the most widespread and it tends to expand. Moreover, contrary to the typical African ancestral circumcision, it has a hierarchical international coordination network with religious leaders, which makes it stronger organizationally within the framework of a true feeling of belonging to a community, what they name the Huma. The strategic framework to approach Muslim circumcision can only be planetary. The Muslim populations resulting from migrations being added to the populations of the vast lands of Islam. It's unrealistic to think that Muslims will abandon circumcision under the pressure, pressure of a global ban perhaps with UN peacekeepers landing in Mecca. The use of force, the force of the right, would lead to a hardening of the defense of circumcision by the Muslims. It would be counterproductive and would aggravate tensions between Muslims and the rest of the world. We have seen it with the cartoons of Mohammed, where the wearing of the veil, terrorism and so on. A culture buried by force, would rise from its ashes at the first opportunity, the abandonment of circumcision would not be deep and lasting. So we have to ask if there is another strategy for Muslim circumcision than the awakening of consciences. Marike, please. Okay, uh, just a technical question. Shall I uh, share my screen or shall we see? No, it's okay. I shared my, uh, okay. my screen and I highlight your item. Okay, it's perfect. Sorry. So, um, to continue uh, on uh, this topic, to discuss the, the strategy of Draw Auto Core, uh, I would like to explain in this chapter why uh, Draw Auto Core thinks that the best strategy to achieve um, the reduction of uh, Muslim circumcision, as we think it's the major challenge, is the path of compassion. So, that's the goal of this section. So, let's start at the beginning. Why do we want to end sexual mutilation? And at Drawcore, we discuss this a lot since uh, we didn't have time to explain all the history of Drawcore, but since uh, 2013, there were a lot of discussion and thinking about this topic. And collectively, Drawcore members decided that we want to give priority to the alleviation of suffering. So that's a very uh, important priority for us. And this is what ethical philosophy calls algo priority prioritarism. Sorry, it's a difficult word, but you can find it in the document. So, with this starting point in our head, the no strategy becomes obvious for us, at least it is the path of compassion in order to reduce as much suffering as possible. So, the particularity of this approach is that it is completely inclusive. It means that the no circ, so us, find themselves obliged to take into account the fears and the suffer suffering of the treatment pro circ in their tradition. When we say alleviate suffering, it means all suffering of all the stakeholders in this, uh, in this uh, topic. So, moreover, we need to be uh, consistent and we must accept to push this ethical logic to its conclusion. However, destabilizing it can seem to us. If the sufferings generated by the fight against circumcision turned out to be worse than the sufferings generated by circumcision, then 
if we follow this logic, it means that the NoCirc would have to give up their fight. So, um, besides, a, ma a major cultural change always involves suffering for those threatened by the change, as you all know, I think. And then, a change is all the easier to bring about if efforts are made to reduce this suffering, which is an obstacle to change, indeed. For example, it is not easy to give up eating meat overnight, even when you are convinced of the astronomical amount of animal suffering it causes every day. But isn't it much easier to give up carnism, so give up eating meat, if there is a whole range of tasty, cheaper and much healthier plant-based food available, and also if this vegan option is accessible everywhere. So, what we want to say is that if we find ways to reduce the suffering of the people threatened by the change, it will be much easier for them to accept to change their habits. In conclusion of this topic, since the path of compassion involves taking into account the sufferings of the process in order to reduce them as much as possible, it has the consequence of making it a very effective strategy in terms of reducing the obstacles to change. So that's why, together at Vaucor, we chose this strategy. Okay, and what, which strategy should we follow? We follow the appeal to open a public debate on the conditions one person can consent to his own circumcision. Which claim can be defended by the no-circs no at the world level as well at the local level? compatible with each segment of circumcision and that makes it possible to widen the communication and the awakening of the consciences with the passing of years. The ideal demand is the appeal to open a public debate on the condition for consent to circumcision. This claim must be based on the slogan that circumcision can cause severe lifelong suffering even if not all circumcision leads to suffering. This slogan has immense advantages. First of all, to be unquestionable, even by pro circs and to awaken consciences without stigmatizing the circumcised. Let us avoid them the double punishment, such as the use of the expression sexual mutilation, which devalues them in addition to being a victim of their circumcision. And why is this, cl this claim the ideal claim? Because no one can go against such a claim. On the contrary, to refuse the debate would be frowned upon and disqualifying for those persons. Because it is possible to keep pushing this demand year after year as long as the debate is not opened. Because behind this claim, it's possible to communicate more and more widely on the sufferings linked to circumcision, book after book, TV program after TV program, colloquium after colloquium. And because this claim encompasses all segments of circumcision, cultural or medical, unlike a compartmentalized claim, such as the only prohibition of ritual circumcision. Because this claim is much more precise than the classic claims of right to physical integrity or genital autonomy. Since genital autonomy is primarily a matter of consent, then it is appropriate to focus on the specific conditions of such consent. It's well known to what extent consent to circumcision is not properly informed nowadays all over the world. Because also this demand is not a closed proposal, but remains open to different issues, including the age of consent to circumcision. This avoids giving the feeling that the no circs believe they are the holders of the only truth, but shows that they rely on the consideration of all point of views in the debate, the only source of legitimacy in a democracy. Because this demand is consistent with long-standing actions against female genital mutilation, such as the ban at any age as proposed to a demand for a ban on ritual circumcision before the age of 18, 
which would conflict with the abolitionist approach to female genital mutilation and be legally discriminatory. And because these demands puts everyone around the table, including the advocate of the best interests of the child, who are much more politically powerful compared to the no sex liputation, but also lay people, feminists, and many other people. And because the public and private signatories of such a permanent appeal makes it possible over the years to build up a vast network of sympathizers, sympathizers all over the planet, planet and well beyond the no sex. This network can be mobilized for other actions from one year to the next in circles that are constantly widening over time. The lateral project strategy is a proven technique for driving difficult changes, which has been taught for some decades in business schools, but which can be used for large scale social change. The main principle are the following. Those who want change should devote their energies to pampering the lateral allies of their project so that their own resources can be added up and form a mass. Because it's impossible to convince opponents of a change to support it, so don't bother to discuss it with them as they will not facilitate the change. Change comes first from lateral allies thanks to the mobilization of their own networks, which are much more powerful than those of the initiator of the project. A change in society only occurs when the large mass of passive persons have changed their mind. It is the action of the lateral allies that will gradually tip over this silent majority. When the passive persons have changed their mind, the change becomes irresistible opponents can no longer prevent it. Now we have to ask what are the lateral allies of the no who should be pampered? In order of importance and influence, the feminists and more generally actors positioned on gender oppression, the kiddists, that is those who are in charge of the child's best interests, the atheists, rationalists, humanists, and skeptics, rights and equality advocates, the health professions, the intelligentsia and politics, sexologists, of course, the animal cause also. Think of the hundreds of millions of animals castrated without anesthetics annually in intensive farming. The actors in the fight against violence, sexual violence, educational violence, organizations fighting against LGM, of course, generally speaking, algo prioritarian organizations in one way or another, altruism, compassion, etc., the ex-Muslims, the ex-Jews and the ex-Christians, and organizations fighting against intersex and transgender sexual mutilation. The test carried out by Drogo in 19, with the appeal for debate, focused on the French government alone. It demonstrated the potential of such a strategy. The impressive diversity of the public signatories gives a fourth taste of what the vast network of lateral allies of the no CIRC cause could be like. We have organizations like the Algo Prioritarist, Excision, Intersex and Trans, Gender and Feminism, Kidism, Health, Sexologists, uh, legal groups, secular people, intelligentsia, political people, Muslim culture, the ancestral culture, the Jewish culture, and the animal cause. We had also private signatories come from more than 60 countries, including countries where the practice is highly developed. Uh, I would say the USA, lands of Islam, Israel also, and Africa. Uh, in the document, we'll find a land map uh, who, are, who have uh, who are sticked in all the signatures. If such a consensual appeal was promoted by all the Norsiaks on the entire planet in the next 10 years, ra rather than only by Drocor, how many millions of signatories, how much awareness raising through this channel, how many articles in the media, how many radio broadcasts, how many lateral allies on board, 
who will relay the appeal in their own networks. Marike, please. Thank you. So, uh, as already explained by Guy, the appeal to open a public debate on the conditions of consent to circumcision is not a closed proposal and many questions remain open, such as the age of consent. At what age uh, would a boy be able to uh, give his consent to circumcision? So that is indeed a very difficult question. And we will try in this chapter to explain our position on how to, uh, to start the debate on this point. So to start, the, the first question that came into our minds when we were drafting the appeal in uh, 2019, as explained by Guy, was the following. So how can we succeed in including pro-circumcision pro groups in this perspective of a great debate? How can we ensure that they are not closing themselves of starting right from the start and reject the very idea of this debate. So our ideas at the time were the following. So in order for pro-circumcision groups to accept to take an interest in this appeal and to reflect internally on the evolution of their practice, uh, a win-win situation must be proposed to them, which means a perspective that allows them to come out with their heads held high a creative solution that will alleviate a maximum of suffering, indeed, even if it does not correspond at first to the absolutist ideal of the North Cirque, who aim to abolish circumcision completely on the model of a female genital mutilation. So that was one uh, idea. The, the or, or other idea was that the policy initiated by the World Health Organization in 2007 as you all know, it's uh, about voluntary circumcision with the goal of reducing the risk of getting infected by HIV. For us, we think it's an unhoped for opportunity to establish such a win-win situation because we think it's making it possible to put on the table for discussion a solution, a new solution that is different from the abolitionism obtained with respect to female genital mutilation but without illegitimate discrimination. So, I, um, for instance, in the Nordic country, as uh, Johan explained, there was an issue because the female genital mutilation is forbidden for the, uh, at whatever age, whether uh, some parties wanted to ban circumcision up to the age of 18, which was considered by opponent as an illegitimate uh, discrimination and some uh, political politicians even feared that uh, the no cirque uh, wanted to re-establish um, female genital mutilation after the age of 18 because it would create an illegitimate discrimination between boys and girls. So that's very important point. So what are the arguments? Is that that's a very difficult issue, so we can also discuss it later in the question, but I'll try to explain uh, our strategy. So, what are the arguments that Drucker has found in favor of the particular age of 13 years old as a proposal for the age of consent? So, just a precision, so Drucker does not particularly wish 13 years to become the age of consent to circumcision, neither does probably any no circ. But we have to take into account all the parameters of this complex equation that is circumcision if we want to find the narrow path leading to the abandonment of this practice. So this is just to explain that this is not our final goal, this is a step in the process. So why 13 years old? Because it's in, it is, we think, an acceptable age for Judaism for two reasons. So first one is that it, in Judaism, it is theologically accepted that circumcision can be delayed after eight days of life if there is a risk to the baby's health. And nowadays, we can all agree that it is widely discussed that circumcision presents some risk for the health of the baby. Besides, uh, 13 years is the age of uh, Bar Mitzvah in uh, Judaism, where the obligation to observe the religious commands passes from father to son, including the obligation of circumcision. It means that somehow the 
a boy is considered able to take his own responsibility in front of the face. Uh, in the Muslim world, we also consider, we also know that uh, 13 years old is the age of Ismail at the time of his circumcision. And it happens that Muslims recognize themselves from this um, descent of the Abraham uh, family. So it could be also an interesting uh, proposal for them. Uh, more um, from a more uh, sociological uh, point of view, 13 years old is the age of first sexual relation in the West, at least for 5% of young people in countries such as Canada or France, according to the most recent polls. Thus, as long as the governments will continue to support the World Health Care Organization in its policy of circumcision to prevent HIV, how is it possible for them to forbid that a young person of 13 years old can choose circumcision as a medical means of reducing his own risk of getting infected by the HIV. So this is to come back to uh, the beginning of this talk. Besides, fem female genital cosmetic surgery, so not mutilation, but cosmetic surgery is allowed for adolescent girls in many countries that have banned excision which for lots of us is, uh, seems a bit uh, hypocrite and is uh, contested by uh, the associations involved in the fight against female genital mutilation. With reason, indeed, because people could just disguise uh, excision as cosmetic surgery. Nevertheless, it is authorized. So for what reason would it be possible to forbid an adolescent boy from choosing this cosmetic surgery such as circumcision when an adolescent girl is already entitled to it by law. So for all these reasons, uh, as you can see, there are many reasons to propose 13 years as the age of consent for circumcision. And so these are our arguments. Uh, the next question, very important in this uh, strategy is, should it be us, so the no circumcision group, who propose to introduce the age of 13 into the debate? Or is it better not to talk about it? So we also had many uh, discussions and uh, quite uh, lively uh, debates about this topic in uh, Droit au corps. But finally, we think that, yes, it is the best strategy that the no circ talk about this age and make this proposal of the 13 years old first. So why? Uh, first, we think it's a good um, way to proceed. It's a good, uh, ta so tactically, it's the best way to proceed since uh, whatever we do, th this parameter in the equation is likely to come up on the table at some point in the future. Thus, it is best for us, the no circ to ta take the lead as a gesture of goodwill you remember our first idea was to uh, go for a win-win situation. And also it's a good way to pose the problem in the most judicious way possible since we already have all the arguments to answer any um, contradiction. Um, secondly, if uh, the no circ put forward this solution of goodwill first, their attitude will be very positive and likely to win the sympathy of public opinion. And uh, finally, pointing out this compromise solution, so proposing it ourselves, starts uh, right from the start, makes it all the more difficult for Muslims or Jews to refuse to sit down at the table and debate with us. In, in this case, uh, people will, will uh, ask what are the reasons for not doing so. And if they nevertheless adopt the policy of the empty chair, this would not be favorable for their image in public opinion and with the public authorities. Finally, as the conclusion of this uh, chapter, we all recognize that nowadays at 13 years old, a young person anywhere in the world probably has a lot of opportunity to learn, either on the internet or from his friends or cousins, the arms related to circumcision, especially with all the good work that all of you are doing uh, in your different countries, especially about the, its impact on sexuality, which becomes a major issue for boys at this age. Thus, we think that if the group or religious community try to pressure 
this boils to impose their religion on him, and in particular to impose circumcision. It is the religion itself which will be threatened and might um, risk to disappear in one or two generations. Indeed, again, we had a lot of uh, lively debates on how a 13 year old boy would react under such a high pressure situation, but we think it will, um, yeah, it will also trigger debates in the families and in the communities and in the groups of friends, and that's very important. Now we are shifting to the next um, item. There are some complementary strategies to the, uh, this appeal of debate, like uh, Marie uh, exposed. We name it um, at Roca, we name it the domino game. Um, we need to treat each of the four main segments of circumcision separately. Medical, the Muslim one, ancestral circumcision with mirroring FGM and the Jewish one. The tactical priority is to take down the medical domino at, at first that serves as an alibi for the other three segments. The medical domino has three main aspects. Thymosis in Europe, the neonatal circumcision in the USA, and uh, the item of uh, HIV with the um, World Health Organization. Bringing down this medical domino, thymosis in Europe, um, Drocor has put together a very thorough scientific dossier on the health of the penis, which opens up the prospect that the circumcision of children would never be necessary from a medical point of view. This result makes it possible to claim the suppression of the public financing of the pseudo-medical circumcision. This is what at first, uh, what the first international campaign is doing as of 2020. Uh, we had an open letter, the COVID-19 um, letter, um, that other countries can reuse and adopt to their necessities. This dossier, the dossier uh, about the health of the penis, uh, can be taken up and translated by all NERSERC organizations on the planet to push the same demand. And at the same time, demand a penis health training plan for the professionals. Bringing down the medical domino of neonatal circumcision in the USA, our American colleagues are working on it. Okay, cheer up. Bringing down the VHO HIV medical domino, setting up a class action suite for its African victims by targeting the weak points of its massive campaign. The lack of consent is blatant in this stuff. The recommendation of neonatal circumcision as less risky is obviously biased, if only because there are no statistics on death related to neonatal circumcision. The recent disengagement of PEPFAR is a timely piece of evidence. The class action is very motivating for African, given the financial amounts of compensation that can be envisaged. It's an opportunity to bring together Africans and their representative organizations on a large scale. To treat the four large segments of circumcision, the ancestral one, to set up joint female male circumcision prevention plans as immediate practical work for our organization we created, the ECASM, it makes it possible to link the NOSER cause to the highly developed institutional system that is the fight against FGM. The ProSERGs will find it increasingly difficult to separate the fight against excision from that against circumcision. To treat the fallout segments of circumcision, the Jewish one, counting on the internal developments, for example, the Symposium 2015 in Paris, organized in defense of the Jewish circumcision, was paradoxically devastating for the eight-day circumcision. Since circumcision is dangerous for the baby, the health, Judaism provides that it should be postponed. Brit Shalom at eight days and Brit Milah at the age of consent, perhaps. And now the Muslim one. Communicate 
about suffering, including the degradation of sexual potential by gradually broadening the channels of communication, support no certain networks from populations of Muslim culture, and welcome experts from the Muslim culture to advise the no circs. We have it we had it this evening at three o'clock with Mohammed Fami. Malik, it's your turn. Okay, thank you. So uh, after presenting a draw core uh, domino game strategy, we will now discuss uh, our understanding of the comparative effectiveness of strengths of law versus paths of uh, compassion strategies. Uh, for the sake of time, uh, I won't uh, go into a lot of details, but for those interested in this question, you can see a more detailed discussion in the email sent to Brian Earp by Drawcore in May 2020, and it is copied at the end of the presentation document from Drawcore. So, shortly, so Drawcore thinks that the strategy based on the strengths of law promoted by many no sex organization is a high risk one compared to the path of compassion strategy that we uh, prefer, as you understand from the <laughs> beginning of this talk. So indeed, we think that it relies on three rights which are not fully consensual in the world of today. So I will try to explain this uh, um, shortly. So the first uh, right, indeed, as it was mentioned in a previous talk, was is the right to physical integrity. So first, we, to our knowledge, it does not even exist in the world law. And for instance, uh, the education of the youngest, we, some people can uh, argue that it leads to a physical modification of their brain. So. In this case, would education be an attack on their physical integrity that they don't consent to, most of them at least, and without medical reason? So as you can see, this right might not be consensual for everyone and some people may, might argue that we are doing other things to the young ones or the, the children that may lead to, uh, an, to alterate their physical integrity such as education, for instance. Another um, right that we want to discuss is the right to dispose of one's body. In this case, we need to be very cautious because we might alienate feminists who fight fiercely to abolish prostitution, even if the woman or the man uh, freely consents to it. Or also the people who fight against the harmful street drugs against autonomy over one's own body. So do we have the right to uh, prevent someone from taking drugs that will destroy his or her else? And uh, if we really um, defend the right to dispose of one's body, some people might argue about these two uh, situations that I have just described. Finally, the rights of the child. So indeed, the International Convention on the Rights of the Child, dating back to from uh, 1989, um, was a very positive initiative in many ways. But for instance, it confirmed the legal minority of the youngest, which allows them to be forcibly circumcised under the more important will of their parents. So we are also asking ourselves the question as a droit au corps, isn't there anything better to do than uh, trying to stand up for uh, the rights of the child. So, in conclusion, af after saying that, what should be the legal strategy of ICASM and also of uh, each of our organization for the future? So this seminar is too short to develop this topic and we hope it could be developed at another symposium. We will just uh, propose some ideas for reflection. So the first idea is to follow the example of feminists who succeeded in putting an end to the legal minority of women in the West after two centuries of struggles. So in comparison, the no -Circ should aim at putting an end to discrimination against the youngest by putting an end to their legal minority, which would radically put an end to forced circumcision. 
This equality of rights without arbitrary age is precisely the objective of kidism. Another idea is uh, to put an end to the 1948 um, sorry, Jewish Christian holdup on fundamental rights by promoting a progressive rewriting of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights from which the rest, the rest of the legal architecture is derived country by country. For example, the right to found a family specifies in Article 26 that, and I quote, parents have as a matter of priority the right to choose the kind of education to give to their children. This confirms the rights of one category of citizens, the parents, over another category of citizens, the children, and thus opening the door to forced circumcision of one category by the others. So at uh, Drogo, we also have, uh, are thinking about a legal strategy, but more around these two uh, options that I just very shortly <laughs> described. Thank you. And uh, I let uh, Guy finish the last uh, chapter. So let's come to the end. What should be the, the strategy of the Alliance? In three points. First of all, some aspects of the no circ strategy, such as the ambitious legal strategy, are impossible to implement without alliances. As a first step, we have to develop ECASM to unite the four types of sexual mutilation, the female one, the male circumcision, the intersex corrective surgery, and even the transgender one. Many countries force transgender people to be sterilized in order to obtain a medicalized sex change, and that's mutilation. As a second step to bring together the lateral allies, feminists, kiddists, lay people, and so on, we are an appeal for debate extended to the whole world as a target to promote the broadest possible and politically powerful algo prioritarian union by joining the Algosia Alliance. The second one is the advanced level of the path of compassion. When a child pinches his fingers in a door, he sometimes kicks it angrily. It seems irrational to us. To be effective in the fight against the circumcision, it is necessary to give up the rage against the pro -sirks. Not to be in the aggressiveness and the confrontation, but only in the search for solutions, in the benevolence, and in a sincerely inclusive approach of their concerns. Yes, the prohibition of eight-day circumcision can be experienced as a foreshadow of the return of the Shoah for the Jews, as circumcision is the foundation of this religion ethic, ethnicity that is Judaism. To threaten circumcision is to threaten the survival of the people itself. It can be experienced as a genocidal threat we must understand this existential anguish. The end of the circumcision can be the end of Judaism, can be the end of the Jewish people. In order to achieve maximum efficiency in the path of compassion, one must understand the illusion of the ego and therefore the illusion of free will. Two scientific discoveries which are quite recent in the West. Understanding the illusion of ego of free will allows one to convince oneself that the door has not chosen to pinch my fingers and there is no point in kicking it back or to understand that pro circuits never decide to circumcise and that one should therefore not hate them for doing it. And understanding the illusion of the ego is essential to include pro circuits in the sphere of our benevolence with a view to a collaboration of all for a maximum alleviation of suffering. And the third one, what's the outlook for ICASM chronologically, perhaps in 2020 to develop a strategic framework valid worldwide with a view to the abandonment of circumcision. Next year, perhaps to develop synergies between the local strategies of each organization and global strategy and perhaps even next year to develop joint actions among several ECAS members, for example, joint plans for the prevention of female and male circumcision. Thank you.
So we have a lot of questions. I need to find the first one relating to our topic. That's the one from uh, Elodie at 9.11. Ah, voilà. mm. I think it's, it is the same problem we have with excision. We have traditions and, communi and community in front. Okay. I think it was related and to the obstacles uh, of change. Because that was uh, at this. Is okay. it uh, the case, Elodie? Can you continue, Marika? There's a question at 9.26. Yes, uh, Elodie said ATM is also a big pressure, so I think we could join the fight against ATM. It is because 13 years old is the legal age in Europe to have right to be recognized in front of law. I'm sorry, but I don't know what is ATM. Yes. So I can have a look on the internet. Elo right. Elodie, you must switch on your microphone. Or are you right in the chat? We don't know what ATM is. <laughs> Can do many okay. things. No, it was a, it was a mistake because I wanted to speak about FGA. Ah, ah okay, okay, okay. Sorry. No problem. Yes, okay. As I said uh, at nine forty, um, <laughs> that's effectively one of the strategic aims we uh, we want to achieve in the ICASM. Yeah. Um, do we have Muslim and Jewish inside the community to know and debate with them as they are concerned? I think today at least uh, we should have some uh, Jewish people in this in this um, in this conference. Um, at least uh, two people I, I saw. Yeah, uh, friends yes. from the Brit Shalom uh, French group, but maybe yes. others as well. Uh, at least you are concerned, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, yes, and there are such contacts and they are very effective in the US and uh, we have also contacts with Israel and we hope uh, um, um, the Israelis will, um, will make one of the next, um, the next uh, exposés here in, uh, in this conference on a later date, of course. Victor. The alternative proposal 2012 in Germany in the parliament was the minimal age of 14 years. It was rejected, so as was rejected the age of 18. It was not even hardly considered a compromise in the media, although, although it would have been a huge compromise, unconstitutional and sexist because less protection of a child who has a penis. You must know that in Germany in 2013, they passed a law, they need, uh, I, I want to, to, to stress that they needed two years to achieve the law against FGM. They punish FGM even if it's done in the foreign countries, but they only needed six months to allow circumcision for boys, huh, for people having a penis, like Victor is saying. Maybe we could advocate that uh, in 2012, uh, following uh, the trial in Cologne, uh, everything went very fast and uh, not enough uh, communication and consideration was given to the, the suffering, as we try to explain, of the uh, Jewish and Muslim communities. Maybe it was just rejected because it came too fast and people did not understand uh, no, the two communities made, a, uh, made an outcome immediately after, uh, after we knew about this law that passed in Cologne. And uh, the only purpose of the German government was to, uh, um, was to stop this discussion and, and, to, and, and to, to, to make this law very fastly. The first time I saw the law, as it was voted two months later, I think the law uh, was uh, was ready in, in the end of at the end of October. I really thought it was a hoax, but it passed exactly word by word as it was um, decided in October in order to to protect uh, the the Jewish community first of all, 
because of the of the history of Germany, of course. Mm. Everybody was in fear, so. Mm. Okay. Um, ah, Jean Christophe. Um, ah, there was a question from Felix first. Okay. Marika? What, what could be the motivation for religious group to even engage in the debate, apart from maybe bad publicity? What do they have to lose? Is there anything about the status quo they even might want to have changed? And follow-up question, is there a plan B if the appeal to debate doesn't work? And there, so Jean-Christophe answered that the appeal for debate can be cumulated with other strategies. It comes in addition. So indeed, it doesn't forbid uh, each country to, to do their own uh, project. And to answer uh, what could be the motivation for religious group to in, even engage in this debate, uh, we at the uh, Brit Shalom uh, Group France, we think that, uh, and we receive more and more uh, requests from family who don't want to circumcise their son, but are hesitating between uh, performing a Brit Shalom and still doing a Brit Mila under the pressure of this uh, of their families. So we think that uh, the motivation, at least for the moderate religious leader, is that some of the communities will be really pushing for an internal debate. Maybe someone has a better answer. And Felix, no, not a better answer, but uh, another answer <laughs> in addition. Uh, we had the debate of Me Too, you know, in, in, in 1819 and, and this year, and everything is going uh, in the direction of consent. Yes. And that's why this idea of the debate on the conditions of a valid consent is so important um, because time is working for us. John Atkinson is asking, how do they expect to draw a line between a large clitoris and a micro penis? Or as Erb puts it, a clitoral penis. Is it, do you have an answer for this question, John? I think uh, John wanted to say that it's a uh, hypocrite to uh, Authorize uh, such uh, some uh, uh. genital operation for boys and not for girls because there is a continuum with the intersex population. And indeed, I think it's a very good argument. That, uh, yeah, at yeah, which yeah, point yeah. Uh, you need to stop, and it's not a legal person who can decide for sure. Yeah, that's that's why I'm trying to point out is that it's as long as the door is open for male genital cutting, um, the door will be open for female genital cutting because it's, mm -hmm. it's really difficult to draw the line. Sure. And then Jean-Christophe added uh, an explanation, also uh, I think an answer to the question of Felix, and he says the strategy of the appeal for debate is not directed primarily towards the religious group, but towards lateral allies public authorities and public opinion, as we explained in this uh, strategy of uh, making more and more people supporting our cause, even the passive people, and not uh, directly confronting uh, the religious uh, leaders. And I can add that you must know that in Germany, each parent has the right to circumcise his male child for any purpose, even if they think uh, circumcised penis are more beautiful or something like that, for each purpose. So they never voted a law to protect Jews. They allowed circumcision for any purpose. That's interesting. That's playing for us. And Sophie, also from Drawcore, added that the purpose of the appeal for debate, as we all agree together inside Drawcore, is to launch the conversation into the intimate sphere in order to free the victim's speech. When your brother, your son, your husband, your father declares his suffering from his uh, circumcision, pe people around will, will listen immediately and um, will want to try to, will want to move to something different. 
So the ID is not to be immediately effective in the law, but that people really in their families and friends group uh, discuss it and force their leaders to act on it. Okay, we don't have any question anymore. We have, we are six minutes from 10 o'clock Berlin time, eight o'clock UTC. So I would like to propose that we can continue in about six minutes. If you are okay with this, we make a, a little break or we stay online. What do you think? Uh, suggest a little, uh... Little pause. Okay. Little break. Okay. Then. But there was again a, in, in there was a last first? comment from Victor. Ah. Okay. That we might want to discuss, so I can read it. I agree with the consent aspect, but from my experience, I can see no point that the 13H strategy would work. Religious group would fight it the same way because they know exactly that at 13 years age, minimum that a 13 years age minimum would be the end of male genital mutilation. But I see a sincere danger for international alliances. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we, we will have to discuss this point. Uh, mm -hmm. At least nobody wants this 13 years. It's only an intellectual game in order to discuss and to compare some points who are existing in reality. The reality of being able to consent in an in a aesthetic surgery and the reality of not being able to consent um, in some other um, surgeries. It's, it's only a, a, a way to access communication to those people. Okay, so we have only four minutes to rest. <laughs> Okay. And just to conclude, as we already explained, in the WWD DOGA document, you have a link to the presentation of uh, Droit au corps, and there is the slide that we showed, but also uh, the outline of all the talk that we gave. So if some things were a bit unclear for you, you can always read it uh, slowly uh, afterwards. Yes, and Johan Newman can read it in French even. Ah yes, there is a French version as well. Okay, so I propose we make a little break because we have also to, um, to, to I have to download the, uh, the video uh, Zoom created. Okay, thank you all. We see um, we are together in three minutes, okay? <laughs>